It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today was mail day and I got some really cool things that have been happening and uh, can't wait to actually build and test these. So without much further ado, let's get down onto the desktop and check out two of the latest PCBs that I've been working on for people in my community. So I've got two PCBs here. You can see they're slightly different sizes and designs. One was for uh, Taylor from our Slack group, and this is called the Numbrero. And this one here, which is slightly smaller, is somebody that I work with, and this is called the Travel Station. So let's crack open the two and have a quick look. Now, I probably might follow this on with an actual time lapse of at least putting them together to an extent to test that the matrix worked and everything else. Haven't fully decided on what I'm going to do with that yet, but uh, if I do, then you'll see it. If I don't, then you won't. <laughs> really simple, isn't that? Now, this this one here, which is called the Travel Station, was a macro pad that, well, I've talked about both of these on the podcast. So this is a macro pad for my work colleague who wanted something for launching programs, mostly, at home. At least that was what was told to me. And so, sorry, Trade Station, not the Travel Station, my bad. It's not my naming, so uh, so there you go. That That is uh, what it's called. So shout out to Dida for, for sending this through to me f to work on and put together and build. Now, um, what we've got here is a, that's the underside, so, not that it technically matters on this one. What we've got is two rows of 1U and we've got two rows of 2U. So you've got larger keys on the bottom for, I suppose, stuff that you're going to run more frequently and then these are probably the things that you're going to run less frequently. It's driven off a of Pro Micro, and this is the first one that I actually put together using uh, Kibio, Danny from Kibio, footprint with the zigzag Pro Micro. So let's just test how that came out. So I've got these Pro Micros that already had the headers soldered onto them because I was using these for breadboarding and I don't have to solder the actual header pins in because it's a breadboard. So they were perfect to put these on it. Now noting that that's the underside and this is the orientation. Let's see how these fit. Oh, it's snug, but you want them to be. There you go. Wow, that's that's really awesome. And uh, you can see that it's it's like it's not going anywhere at all. The amount of force that you kind of need to get this to move is just like the amount of force that is on a breadboard. Now, noting that I've just shoved that in, I mean, there's no visible damage at all to the pins. I'm just having a quick look at the pads, at these through holes to see if there's any notable issues on them. So there's some lines that I can see, like scrape lines, but you kind of expect that because you're forcing the pins against it, but it doesn't look like they're very deep at all. So I'm going to say that uh, you would probably get a good number of ins and outs before you would really start to see any real damage to the electrical contacts on these pads at all. So that's actually really good. That's actually really good. Now, of course, we'll be able to check this out later electrically and see if uh, there's any issues. And I, I do like how well this has turned out in that having the silk screen indicate what the row and columns makes it easy for mapping purposes and uh, this is the first time I've actually had something built with a white solder mask and a black silk screen and I think our logo came out really really nice and crisp on that so that's fantastic so that's the that's the trade station there's the trade station there and so this one is the Numbrero. Now the backstory to the Numbrero, which I talked about on the podcast, is that uh, Taylor's work colleagues wanted a left-handed numpad. And 
a couple of extra keys for things like backspace and tab because they were left-handed. And rather than being able to use a standard numpad or even just a, a programmable numpad because it didn't have the extra keys, they asked for a bit of assistance in putting a, a numpad together. So this one's slightly different yet again because this is the first time I've done a reversible PCB. And so what I mean by reversible is that the default layout is for a right-hander this side. So there's the 2U for the plus and the enter and the zero key. But using these footprints that I also got from Kibio's Git library, you can now flip this over and then the plus enter and zero become on the other side for a left-handed user. Which I'm hoping that I've used this correctly um, and we'll find out. But I've also put in reset switches to be on either side as well, however you like. And technically the pin map doesn't matter uh, so much in that you can you should be able to put a pro micro and well this one's going to be a little bit different because you have to make sure your pro micro is facing still the correct orientation it just means you're going to have one side facing this way whereas the other side will be facing that way so i can't really do that with this one except in the correct orientation which is going to be uh it should be that side which means by default with this particular map it's actually left-handed with the way that I've got my Pro Micro currently. But that's okay, it's not a big deal. I can just break out another Pro Micro and fix that and flip that around. And once again, this is using that same that same footprint, the zigzag footprint, and you can see how snug that Pro Micro is sitting and it's just not going anywhere at all, which is which is really fantastic. Okay. Uh, having a quick look at the, the quality, now this is made with all PCB, which is kind of like my go-to PC fab. I'm pretty happy with the quality on that. The detail is, is pretty clean, pretty crisp. So it's probably also one of the reasons why I'm, I'm always happy to go back to them, even if they do cost a little bit more compared to some other services. But they have consistency and they have really great really great customer support there as well. So there's the actual two PCBs. Um, I'm hoping to be able to put them together and test how they turn out. And, uh, we'll go from there. So if you do need a hand in putting together any sort of PCB designs, simple stuff, and, and you're apprehensive about it, there is some tutorials that I've done on working with KiCad. I'm gonna say that they're not the best ones out there, but they show a very elementary, I suppose, um, start point on how to use KiCad. I do want to also note with this video that it is KiCad version 4 point something. They now have KiCad 5, and it is slightly different in how the graphics look and everything else like that. So uh, there's some things in loading libraries and footprints and mod files and stuff like that which is slightly different but there's heaps and heaps and heaps of forum and guides out there as well to help you with that but if you want to reach out to us by all means please do so and uh, what you can also do is you can join us on slack because we have a design channel on our slack come along ask questions throw up stuff for feedback um, we're pretty friendly guys and of course Danny from Kibio himself frequents and haunts that place and provides a lot of support when he's got the time to do so. So there you go. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be attached onto this, just some time lapses of building this or not, but we'll just see how it goes. If not, then uh, thanks for checking out the video. And of course, if you like seeing this kind of stuff and you wanna know more, please hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, and of course, leave a comment below. So there you go. Uh, we'll, we'll cut it there if there is more to go. Uh, I hope you enjoy that. If not, as usual, until next time, happy kayaking.
Okay, so we're back, um, and what you have had seen just then probably would have been a time lapse of me putting on some diodes. Um, I haven't actually soldered any switches on these because I'm waiting to find out uh, what switches my work colleague actually wants for the trade station. Whereas I didn't want to solder switches onto this one, the Numbrero, because it's actually designed for left hand, right hand flipping. And if I soldered them on, obviously that would limit my sort of testing. Uh, but it's actually been, it took me two hours to put on the diodes and then actually build and flash the key maps. Uh, the key map that went on to the trade station was pretty easy. There was really no hassles at all whatsoever. I managed to, to flash that and that worked pretty well. So I'll just show you that it does actually work. <laughs> so I've got these two Pro Micros that I showed earlier. And the first thing actually before I go on to the key map stuff is these zigzag footprints work well, but if you're going to be swapping components a lot, you will need to solder your Pro Micro in eventually. And the reason why I mention that is because I haven't had to play around a lot with this particular one, this Trade Station PCB, and this Pro Micro is very snug. It's it's like I'm pulling with quite a bit of force and it's not going anywhere because I've only plugged it in and taken it out twice. Okay. On this one, on the Numbrero, I was making some mistakes when I built the flashing, when I built the QMK firmware on it, and I've actually taken it out and inserted the Pro Micros several times. I've actually lost count, but um, it comes out really easy. Okay, so I can actually, like, it, it actually inserts very easily, which is essentially showing that while the zigzag does work, the footprint does wear and I don't have my setup for using the loop very well but using it you can actually see the groove tracks that is being formed by the legs on the header pins forming in the actual zigzag against the walls and that's why this is like it's still holding like don't get me wrong I can put this on and I can I can now push it in just with you know, very light amount of force, it's still not going to fall out and you can still tap it. But now you can tap it hard enough that it does actually pop out. So light jostling, if it's going to be sitting inside a case, you probably want to make sure that the case supports the PCB. If you're going to be building it as a two PC build, like, like that kind of thing, like as a sandwich build, then you'd probably want to have standoffs so that even if this does slide out, it's still going to maintain electrical contact, but it won't pop out completely. So they're just some things to be aware of that if you do use and swap out the Pro Micro a lot, you're probably going to end up with very loose fit on that zigzag pattern and eventually you'll get poor electrical contact, which means you'll have to solder them in. Okay, so it's a great footprint and it works really well, but over time with wear and tear, as you'd expect, you're going to have to do something about that. All right, so let's switch over, first of all, with the trade station. So let's just plug that in. Okay, so that's in, and I'm not getting any weird shorting effects. <laughs> We're gonna go to my right-hand side, into switch header, and I've just done a very simple one, two, zero, and then ABC kind of stuff, so there's one, there's two, and you'll kind of see on the edge here, um, three should short, there we go, and then four should short, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero should have short there we go and then this should be a there we go and b okay so that so the trade station works perfectly fine so i'm very happy with that and then now 
the the challenging part that I had was I made a mistake when I was actually building the QMK for this and I put in the wrong pin and the entire column three was shorting constantly, the entire row. And it turns out because I miss, I used F3 instead of F4 when I was building the key map, I don't know, just mental blank or something. And so that pin obviously is not an available pin on the Pro Micro itself and it was just constantly shorting. So um, I had to go back and fix that and I couldn't figure out what was going on. That's why I was taking it out and putting it into the actual PCB because I thought there was something wrong with the actual PCB. And then when I identified it was still shorting when it wasn't plugged into the PCB, then I knew it had to be a firmware related issue. So I've reset that keyboard on Elite Keyboards. Now let's put that in. You can see the lights shining through there on, on the much bigger one. And I can Hopefully, which way have I got it? Why is this not working? Do I put it in the wrong side? I put it in the wrong side. That's why. Okay. Make sure you put your Pro Micro in the correct side. <laughs> that would help. Okay, there we go. So, it's still not working? Do I have poor electrical contact? Ooh, I've I've discovered it's not working. Or is it because it's the wrong Pro Micro? I might not have flashed this one. And I was just I was going to. Let's uh, let's change Pro Micros. I've got too many of these things, obviously. Okay. And. Please believe me, it does work. Okay, so there's another Pro Micro, a different one. And there we go, we have one. Oh, two is chattering because I just zipped it across the surface. Uh, I have to go onto the back side for three, then four, five, six, seven, Eight underneath. Nine. Zero. And so on and so forth. So I'm not going to flash. I'm not going to trip all of them because doing that with the <laughs> with the switch and, and tilting it's a bit of a pain. But it does go to show that the PCB is fully functional. So I'm very, very happy with how that has resulted. So there you go. Um, naturally, if you have enough of these and you got standoffs and whatnot, you can just build them very easily as a sandwich, or you can go to the extent of building a proper case and getting a plate and everything else. The reverse footprint works actually really well. You just have to be aware that if you're running with the reverse, you can use the same key map, layout, the same JSON, uh, and all you have to do is just build it in reverse. So don't worry about changing the pin assignments, just look at the actual image on the screen and go, well, I want these, which are going to be on this side, to be this value, and then when you build it, just flip it over and solder it that way. It might take a little bit, like a couple of minutes, to get your head around that if you're not used to flipping, but um, and that's the reason why I built this one, and I hadn't flashed it yet, is because you have to make sure that your Pro Micro is on the correct side. So I see how this one is on the wrong side. That means if I had flashed this one and then I put it on then it'll be it'll be with the actual socket against the board and my reset switch works a treat as well so that makes it easy to uh, actually remap and flash without having a short pins on the Pro Micro itself so there you have it there is a working prototype for the Numbrero and for the trade station so just two more little nifty macro pads uh, to suit, of course, personal use cases. If you're interested in getting hold of these, please contact uh, myself and I can get you in contact with Taylor Rana Ruby uh, for this particular one, which is the Numbrero, a reversible numpad with a couple of extra keys. And if you're interested in a layout such as this, which is the trade station, then uh, please 
let me know and I can have a chat with my work colleague to find out if he's happy for people to uh, get their hands on this PCB for their own use as well. So there you go. A uh, bit of a bit of a fun morning putting some stuff together. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And if, if you got questions, please leave them comments below. You can get hold of us on Slack. Just email us at theboardpodcast at gmail.com for an invite to our Slack group. Otherwise, you can hit us up on Reddit and on Facebook as well. If you'd like to uh, see us do more of these things and, and help support our projects, um, you can also head over to Patreon and you know see what kind of pledge you'd like to make, if at all. So thanks very much for checking out this video. And, you know, as I say, until next time, happy clacking.